Hi, everybody. Welcome to Our Life in the Trinity. I want to bring the uh, message for December 11th, 2022. This is Linda Rex. And our passage today is Matthew 11, 2 through 11. I want to read that in the New American Standard Bible as we begin. We'll say a prayer. We'll talk about our message for today. We'll have communion together, and then we'll have a benediction to close. So it gives you a plan for how we're going to do this. So let's begin with the Word of God, Matthew 11, 2 through 11. Now when John, while imprisoned, heard of the works of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the expected one, or shall we look for someone else? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, and the lame walk, and the leopards are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who does not take offense at me. As these men were going away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are in king's palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and one who is more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there is not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. How interesting. You know, Let's start with a word of prayer, and then I'd like to talk about what it's like uh, being a close relative of Jesus. Hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can gather today and just think about what it means that we are so closely related to you, that we are um, your kin. <laughs> and Lord, we ask today that you would open our minds to see what you would have to see, to hear what you want us to hear, and uh, silence all the other voices. And we thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. Yeah, it must have been really interesting to be related to Jesus. You think about John being a close relative. Of, some people believe even a cousin or, um, yeah, because Elizabeth and Mary were related. And when Mary got pregnant, she went to see Elizabeth. And at that time, Elizabeth was carrying John in her womb and and the baby jumped when uh, Mary came in the room. Jumped for joy. Isn't that interesting? They kind of knew each other before they were ever born. <laughs> That's, yeah, that is interesting. But can you imagine all the stories that were told? You know, they go to a fa festival or something and all the extended family were there. And they would all be telling stories. Stories about Jesus. And I wonder how much of Jesus' story people knew what about the fact that you know he had he was born and all these a angels came and told the shepherds to go look for him do you think maybe they heard about that or that he had to flee to egypt because all the babies were going to be killed and well anyway as they got older john had a mission he, he went down to the area of the Jordan River and he began preaching, um, preaching about the kingdom of God. You know, the kingdom of God is near, is here. Repent and believe. Repent and be baptized. And so he knew who Jesus was, sort of, because when Jesus showed up, he told his disciples, John told his disciples, uh, look, 
there goes the Lamb of God, the one who's to save his people from their sins. You know, John was busy doing his preaching and his ministry, and at one point called uh, King Herod Antipas on having uh, divorced and remarried and Herodias, who happened to be King Herod Philip, Philip's wife. And uh, they had somehow, you know, what's common in our society today is pretty, was pretty much common then. Of, you know, you divorce, you're unhappy with your mate, you just divorce him and go marry the other person you want to be married to. And, and John called him on it. And he ended up in prison. He was just doing his job, right? He was speaking the truth as a prophet of God. Now, the question is, though, if he knew, kind of knew who Jesus was, thinking maybe, you know, he was the Messiah and all, what was it his, what were his expectations of Jesus when he ended up in prison and Jesus was out there doing all kinds of cool stuff like raising the dead and healing people and casting out demons? I mean, Jesus was busy doing what Messiah was supposed to be doing, right? But isn't it interesting that Jesus did not rescue John? And Jesus didn't try to um, fix the situation at all. Isn't that interesting? And so John asks, sends disciples, his disciples to Jesus and asks him, are you the one we're to expect? You know, he thought maybe he thought he had misunderstood. Or perhaps instead of needing reassurance, maybe he was pointing his disciples back to Jesus. I don't know. I give him the benefit of the doubt. But it just seems interesting that he would ask, you know, are you sure? You know, are you really the one we thought you were? And John, John may have been questioning or asking or wondering, but Jesus did not condemn him for this. He wasn't critical of John. No, he actually affirmed him. And he challenged then the crowd and he says, Blessed is he who does not take offense at me. Now, what's interesting in the Greek, the word offense sounds a little bit like skandalisthai or something like that. I don't speak Greek. But if we looked at the letters in English, it looks a lot like the root of our word scandal or scandalized. You know, isn't it interesting that we need to be reminded by Jesus? Don't be scandalized by grace. Don't be scandalized by me and what I'm doing in this world. That's interesting. Are you or am I ever scandalized by the way Jesus does stuff? I mean, do we ever wonder sometimes why God allows things to happen the way he does? I mean, there, there are a lot of things going on. I'm thinking, why would God let that happen? Why wouldn't he do something about that? Why didn't he go rescue that person or fix that problem? Why didn't he stop the war that's going on? Why didn't and see, it's easy for us to pass judgment on God. We do it all the time. It's bad enough we do it to one another, but we do it to God too. And he knows that. But what is God's judgment on us as human beings? You know, God's judgment on us as human beings is Jesus. God judged us as human beings so worthy of his love and attention that he gave us his son and gives us his spirit. God judges us as his good creation that has gone astray, which desperately needs his healing, redemption, and reconciliation. God's judgment on us is we desperately need Jesus. And so 
we see in Jesus in his life and ministry here on earth that he had a great compassion for those who were suffering. He healed many of the sick, but not all. He cured uh, people of their uh, demon possession, but not everyone. And he broke uh, many of the human uh, laws that people built around God's law, trying to protect it, um, where standards that we thought he should be keeping, he didn't keep. That's interesting. But Jesus in his life and ministry demonstrated God's love so profoundly, even to the point of giving himself so freely to us that he allowed us to persecute him, to reject him, to abuse him, to crucify him and kill him. God's judgment on us as human beings, we're broken and sinful and caught in slavery to the kingdom of darkness was that we desperately needed freed. And he did what it took to free us and bring us out into the kingdom of light. And he did this through Jesus. You see, God's method of judgment is so profoundly different than ours. So laden with great grace, with grace, that a lot of times we don't recognize it or we don't believe that that's what it is. God's grace. Don't be scandalized by God's grace. And the grace is meant to be the source of our blessedness and our great joy. Grace, in spite of suffering and difficulty, is meant to bring joy, joy in judgment. During this season of Advent, as we're preparing for the coming of the Lord again, um, coming uh, in his birth through the incarnation, coming then on into Pentecost by the Spirit, and then looking forward to when he comes again in glory. Um, as we start a new, a new calendar year, uh, we begin to look again, preparing for the coming of the Messiah as God in human flesh, a baby in the manger, born of Mary. Does God coming to us in this way scandalize us? Because when the Messiah came, when Jesus came, he didn't come to a king's palace. He didn't come and get dressed in royal robes. He didn't come, uh, although he was celebrated by angels, was he on the hill with the shepherds? Yes. But he came humbly, quietly, on a dark night, in the dark night of our soul as humanity, to bring us light, God's light. Are we scandalized by God's, the way he showed up? Or are we grateful for God's love and his grace? Now, Jesus came in a specific time and place as God in human flesh. The one who made everything and sustains everything by the word of his power through whom all things were made, and by whom all things were made, and for whom all things were made, this one came and became so closely related to us by taking our human flesh on that he became our older brother, our, our father, our friend, our husband. He connected himself so completely to humanity that um, but he did it what for the joy set before him he knew he was going to be crucified and he came and it says in Hebrews that for the joy set before him he endured the cross for us and we are reminded anew during Advent don't be scandalized by 
grace. Receive it with joy. Receive God's judgment on evil, sin, and death with joy and gratitude. Because that is God's gift to us in Christ. And we celebrate this gift again as we take the elements in communion. And we uh, take of the bread and the wine or the grape juice. Uh, Lord... Let us pray together. Lord, thank you for your offering of yourself for us, giving us such a gift of life everlasting and relationship with you now and forever. We receive this with gratitude and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is Jesus. Uh, Jesus' gift to us is a reminder constantly of what he's done. As we take it, we're present again in that moment, receiving again uh, his sacrifice for us, receiving again his pouring out of himself for us, uh, receiving anew his life in us, as though we were present uh, 2,000 years ago, again in that moment. We receive it with gratitude. Thank you, Jesus, for offering your broken body for ourselves. Amen. And thank you, Jesus, for offering all of your life, pouring yourself out for us. Now may our Heavenly Father, who lives eternally with Christ his Son, and us in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, make your joy complete, so you may fully share in God's joy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, God bless you. I hope you have a very lovely Advent season, and hope to see you again next Sunday. God bless.